we're focusing too much on this Jordan Peterson phenomenon. What happened to Jordan Peterson, that's the big splashy stuff. When you watch the video that Danielle Smith and Mickey Amory put out, they mentioned Carolyn Strong. Carolyn was an R, well, she is an RN. Her grandfather died in a care facility. She went on Facebook and talked about his care. She said some of it was good, some of it was bad. She didn't mention any names. She was then reprimanded by her regulator. All she had done was publicly advocate for better palliative care. The importance of free expression is that it's a truth-seeking mechanism. You want people to speak publicly. You know, I would say change the name. Don't call it Jordan Peterson's Law. Call it Carolyn Strom's Law. Those issues are, are the ones that come front and center for me. This heavy-handed approach is one that I have to assume, as a civilian, the hammer doesn't drop without due consideration. It sends a message to thousands, if not millions of people. The regulators are trying to not do that. Some are better than others. There's 29 or 30 health regulators in Alberta. That's our province of just 5 million people. That's a lot of regulators. It can send a very chilling effect. They need to understand that they are being watched. They aren't just these free-floating entities. And I think they've taken that on board, most of them, not all of them. There's things I would change, certainly in my own regulator. Ultimately, the bo- the goal is to benefit the public. Cute Awareness yeah. says, you know, we yeah, we do have to talk about harm to the public. A profession is an elevated and privileged position. Uh, Ms. B says, in a world where basic professional accountability has been eroded, especially in government and politicians, it's a farce for government to act like they're better equipped to dictate this interesting point uh wise kyle says uh, there are conservative nurses i see that people are talking here what if the una were to or, or people were to have nurses were to have their designations threatened by attending the ucp agm this weekend interesting acute awareness what i'm curious about is the counter legislation protecting the public as soon as this new legislation comes into play Gilles wonders uh says i'm most curious about how this uh, applies to regulatory bodies that the government also leads Michael says, I personally believe there should be professional regulators to protect the public and a separate professional association to protect practitioners. Uh, Tracy says these issues are very complicated, but I applaud Colin for working to make things better. Uh, So there you go, Colin, a little bit of praise Mm -hmm. aimed at you. Uh, There's a ton. James says there's a lot of lawyers, doctors, engineers that express themselves politically in this province. But when they say things that go against the profession, that's over the line. That's what you signed up for. Again, with with cancel culture, there's three parties involved. Often what happens with the target of a cancellation, they are pushed, and I was, to either make an apology right away or to make a statement. My response to that has become don't because it, it can be used against you later. And I've compared it in other some academic literature that I published in the U.S. to um, the the false confession in the criminal law context. It has very similar psychological elements to it. There was that fellow from Mumford and Sons who got pushed out of the band for something he had said, and he did this apology right away. And then he went back and he said, no, I wasn't wrong. And what he did then was I thought was smart, was he apologized to the people in his family who were suffering because of what had happened. He was apologizing to them, not for the attack, but for how this was impacting them. Um, and the idea of apologies, I, If you've really done something wrong, sure, apologize. Uh, But generally, they're almost entirely ineffective, and they'll just get you in more trouble than than if you hadn't done it. 